Hey y'all, today me and Mercer are at the new storefront and we're about to shell a few peas. This building is still under construction. It is not complete yet, but we have made a lot of progress in the last few weeks. I've had uh, some great help from my neighborhood. Hood comes out here, man, he gets after it. Eight o'clock at night, He'll be out here working. I'll come by seven o'clock on Sunday morning. He's out here putting tin up. He's getting after every morning, every evening. He's building houses for other people all day long. It's been 100 plus degrees. I checked my phone in here the other day. Actual temperature 104. The feels like was 124. Hood Gay was out there in the sun building a house for somebody. And when he gets done doing that, he gives you something to drink at home and he comes out here and works on this in the evening. So that's been a major, major blessing, major help to have a neighbor like that around here. I was able to get a little help wiring my friend Kurt Mosley come over. You've seen me down at the Mosley Brothers cattle operation before. Kurt is kin to them, but Kurt is my favorite Mosley. All you other Mosleys, listen up. Kurt's my favorite Mosley. Kurt was very busy. And this is a complicated job. I had some three phase, some single phase, had some high voltage stuff, some low voltage stuff. Kurt was able to work me in on a very short notice and get some of these motors wired up in here so I could start shelling peas. So while Mercer catches a little breeze, a little nap in the breeze, we're gonna take a, just a handful of peas here. I'm gonna put them in this roto figure pea and bean sheller we're going to shell them out so we have our peas inside the sheller here we'll get them kind of dispersed a little bit and i'll throw the lid on it and flip her on turn on first that rolls them around, gets them spaced out even. And then we hit turn on last. Got to put a bucket down here. particular pea is called an elite. This is elite cream pea. This is my second year growing elites. They're a little bit longer, like a kid, more of a kidney shape than a sedandy or a lady finger. A sedandy and a lady finger are a little more round, a little more spherical. These are a little bit more kidney shaped, but they're still a very small cream pea. The way this machine works, you have this slotted drum. Inside it is a row of paddles. The paddles are turning one way, the drums turn the other way. The peas are spun up in the air in the drum and they fall back through those paddles. Then the peas are able to fall out through those cracks into this area, that area. See them popping out of the cracks. And as they go down there, as they fall out right here, they come down and there's two PVC pipes here mounted at an angle, one on either side. All the peas land in these pipes and they vibrate to the middle. There's a hole here in the middle. All these peas come from that side falling down and that side falling down. They get this little screen, and this, this screen is called a shaker pan. It shakes, and you get this little fine stuff shakes out. This is like a cleaner. This is cleaning the product. You get this little fine stuff shake out as the peas travel downhill. Normally, normally, I have a squirrel cage fan, a blower, which sits right here and blows up this pipe, blows trash out. 
that helps clean the peas even further. And it will clean out stuff like this right here. There's a little bit of holes getting mixed in. That, that squirrel cage fan will blow that stuff out. I'm not running the squirrel cage anymore because I got one of these. This is my air cleaner. Got a uh, big fan on. This bad, bad boy right here will clean some peas in a quick hurry. And it'll get out a lot more than just a few little leaves. It, it'll blow out anything that's left in there. But we also have a vibratory cleaner. We pour the peas out here. This machine shakes like this. The peas come down and the peas fall through the holes. The holes, the trash, right off the end. And so I typically have peas shelling and peas cleaning at the same time when we're running production. I can, uh, I can clean a bushel of peas in under a minute pretty easy with those machines. This machine, however, takes seven or eight minutes to do a traditional bushel of peas, seven or eight minutes per bushel. Some varieties are quicker, some a little slower. Butter beans, I might can do it three minutes. Um, I normally have a commercial sheller. It sits right here. It's supposed to do about 40 to 45 bushels an hour. That's a lot more. I got this uh, intake right here. I got this elevator. We dump bushels of peas in, and this elevator feeds that big commercial sheller. Peas come out down here. But my commercial sheller has a problem. It's not feeding correctly. Me and the manufacturer have talked about this problem for several years. And they have now come to help remedy the issue. I have confidence in them that they will have the issue remedied in the next few days. That, however, will be a few days too late. I've had a, a tough time this year. It's not been easy. This is my fourth peat crop. The first year I grew eight acres and I had 36 hand laborers. The second year I grew 26 acres, had 34 hand laborers and a machine at ox, my ox boat, BH100 picking. The third year, now that, that second year is during a pandemic. 34 people showed up during a pandemic and worked without mask. Zero got sick, no mask, zero, zero got sick. Think about it, do it, use that knowledge however you want. Last year, the incentives not to work were so great, so powerful. There was so much free food handed out, so much free money handed out. I had 36 acres of peas last year. I had six employees because it turns out if you pay people to stay home and you give them free food, they will stay home and eat that food and they will not go to work. I don't know why that's rocket science, but if you pay people not to work, they will take you up on that deal. And so the government paid everybody a lot of money to stay at home. No one came to pick the peas. I'm not totally dependent on manual labor though. I have a machine that picks peas. Y'all seen the Oxbow in my other videos. The Oxbow will pick the peas. And it has done great before picking peas. It does great on green beans. And it does pretty good on butter beans. But we've had more calamity, more pitfalls. The previous years, I've never had a deer eat a green bean. Zero green beans got eaten, zero. This year, 100% of my green bean crop was eaten by deer, 100%. We got summer permit. We killed a lot of deer. I'm not even gonna say how many on film, but we killed a lot of deer, a lot of deer. Uh, we sprayed deer repellent. They ate all the, all the green beans. They ate the whole crop. It's gone. I hired a consultant this year to help me out with weed management because I had a few coffee weeds last year and nothing gets consulted. My consultant is the best in South Georgia. Number one, the best, and I would recommend him to anyone. I thought my weed situation would be better, but of the crop, 
that I have that wasn't killed by a late cool snout, I planted five pea crops. The second pea crop was 100% wiped out by a late cool snout. First crop survived it, but the second crop was entirely wiped out. And then after we got all five crops planted, we had a major weed issue arise. Buffalo grass came up, never been a problem. This is my fourth season, I never had a buffalo grass problem. Buffalo grass came up. It took 90% of the remaining crop. This waist deep buffalo grass. Machine can't pick in those conditions. So I can't harvest the peas. There are some peas in areas where the buffalo grass didn't come up. And we hadn't decided if it's an over fertilization issue or is a heat issue. We don't know what the issue was, but the machine pick variety peas are normally about this high, about knee high, with a top set of peas. These same varieties I've been planting, been being knee high, they're like this high. They're up around my belt. And a lot of vine. The machine can't pick that. Can't pick it with a machine. We tried. The head wraps up on the machine, solid with the vines. You have to stop every 50 yards to get the vines off the head. The bags come in up here full of peas and the bags are actually 80% vine, 20% peas. You put that stuff in this machine and it doesn't shell right, it mashes up. It doesn't look pretty like that. It's, it's just it's ruined, it's full of garbage. And so what would take me 30 seconds to clean out on a hand pick rider ends up taking an hour to clean out. And that's at that point, you just throw the peas away. They're not worth the amount of time it takes to clean them. So there's no hand labor. The machine can't pick them. The weeds took most of the crop that wasn't wiped out by the late cool spell. The deer ate the green beans 100%. I had uh, 20 acres of butter beans planted this year. Felt good about it. They put on a heavy crop. They are loaded down. I'm talking about loaded. And we had some dove food plots last year. Late, late season. We planted them in July and August. Sunflowers, dove pro so in that area where I had the butter beans. And uh, that was last year. And so uh, since those seeds have matured on those plants and been cultivated in the ground since then you know it's probably been 10 15 inches of rain between that and before i got my crop plant issue so those seeds have been matured they've been tilled into the ground they've been rained on tens of inches they never sprouted we cultivated the land it was irrigated and cultivated uh it was chemical sprayed out there for the help with weed management. We planted the butter beans. The butter beans came up. They got about yay big. And then the sunflowers came up. And then the Dove Proso came up. And they choked the butter beans out. I've never heard of a seed being tilled into the ground and getting rained on for months and not sprouting. But then after the crop sprouting come up then those some flowers and process sprouting come up that's just crazy it's crazy it's, it doesn't make sense the deer never eaten my green beans before and then eating all of them this year doesn't make sense the same varieties i always plant not growing a machine version of themselves this year They're, i can't machine harvest them the same varieties but they grew differently this year and they won't machine harvest i went from 34 and 36 pickers down to three pickers it's a lot of obstacles it's hard it's a lot of obstacles my sheller i finally taught the manufacturer into picking it up uh he agreed to come pick it up after we had this whole room full of peas no way to shell them at that point my cooler as y'all saw may, may have seen an earlier video uh got flipped over by a storm shattered all the front of it tore the cooler the crap and back my insurance politely declined to pay for it 
they uh I talked to the jester on the phone he said are you referring to the five door cooler I said yes I am he says looks like we have you here for ten thousand dollars worth of coverage how much product was lost I said there was nothing in the cooler he said good how much is it going to cost to fix this cooler I said the replacement depending on a few variables for a comparable one right now on the internet today is between seventeen thousand and twenty eight thousand dollars he said can you prove that i said yes i will forward you those links immediately to which he then said you're not covered the same gentleman who just said it looks like here we have you for ten thousand dollars then said you are not covered the same person told me that I talked to my insurance agent the day, my local agent, the day I bought that cooler because it's top heavy and I was worried it would fall off the trailer on the way back home. I said, if something happens to my cooler before I get home, am I covered? She said, yes, you're covered. We got you. You're covered. Turns out we're not. She told me the only way we're covered is if I could tell her the day that we had that conversation and then she'd find it in her notes. I told her it's not my job to do her job for her. I said, that's the only way you're covered. The only way we're covered is if I can recall the date 18 months ago. If I can tell what day 18 months ago we had that conversation. And then she find it in her notes. If she finds it, then I'll be covered. Otherwise, I'm not covered. Thank you, insurance, for failing me. Thank you for taking my money. Thank you. So the obstacles have mounted the crop is lost, cooler's out, sheller's gone, and it would appear I have met the end. Uh, you don't have all these things happen at once for no reason. You know, you, the, the, the deer will be odd. If the deer not eating green beans, and decide to eat all of them the next year. That's, that's odd. I mean, not having those weed problems and having horrific weed problems. The, the late cool spell taking the crop. It's just too many things. It's too many things. Too many. To not, to just say it's coincidence. It's not a coincidence. It's the Lord. The Lord has a different path. He's got something else for me to do. He said, stop, stop doing this. Do something different. And so that's what's happened here. I'm like Jonah. The Lord told Jonah what to do. Instead, Jonah ran the other way. He said, I'm going that way, Lord. I'm not going over there to do what you said. I'm going that way. The Lord has told me to do something different. And I've kept on. I'm going to make it work. He sends the deer to eat my beans. I said, I'm going to do it on the peas, Lord. He sends the weeds to take the peas. I said, the weeds aren't going to stop me. I'm going to pick them with the machine. So the machine wraps up. The cooler dies. The sheller's gone. You can fight the Lord if you want to, but His will is going to be done. It's going to happen. You can make it easy. You can make it easy on yourself and you can do what He's asking. Or you can fight against Him. But His will is going to be done. The easy way or the hard way. So, I've admitted defeat. The Lord is going to have it His way. I'm going to do His will, not mine. We're not going to be in the pea business anymore. I've really enjoyed my time selling peas. Selling peas in South Georgia is easier than breathing air. I can sell these peas all day long. It is the easiest thing you will ever do in your life, selling peas in South Georgia. Getting them picked and shelled is a big challenge. It's hard to do. There are a couple farms here, though, that do it very well. And, uh... I hope y'all do business with them because these peas we grow in South Georgia are the finest peas in the world. I'm not going to be able to go any further with this business. I thank you, each and every one of you that bought peas from me these four years. I love my customers. Y'all been great to me. Y'all been so helpful and so loved. But we're done. What I am going to do, though, is I'm going to show y'all how we clean these peas now that we've shelled them. This is my air cleaner. 
See, I got my peas here and I got these holes mixed in. The peas look pretty good, not very stung up, but got a lot of holes mixed in. So, we have a, a pan and we have a vibrating table right here. This is gravity feeds, and I can adjust how much feed it is for. And then the gravity, uh, and then the vibrating table, I can turn it up and down, make it vibrate less and more, which determines how much it slide off the fan. We want to slow trickle these peas above that fan because if you just flood them over there, it doesn't clean as well. You want just to ease them over, just a slow feed, so we can blow as much of this stuff out as possible. If I'm blowing out too many peas, I can adjust my air so I blow out less peas. So I like to catch my trash initially until I get my air set. So I get set just like I want it. You want to blow out enough trash, but you don't want to blow out too many peas. So you have to fine tune how much air you're blowing across there. take them and put them on the inspection line. Mercer's away. So when we're running uh when we're running full speed in here, we've got a lot of peas. Peas are dumped in this hopper and they come down this inspection line. It's got two dips in it. So the peas kind of funnel into this area and that area. So people on this side just have a small area to look at and people on that side have a small area to look at instead of trying to look at the whole width of it. We're just looking at a little hand size strip. I saved the trash here. I didn't let it just blow into the uh, big barrel here, the, the big cart here. I saved it in this little pan for a reason. We're gonna run this trash on the vibratory shaker and we're gonna get a few more peas out of it. I'm gonna show y'all how that works. I love, 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 love this vibratory shaker. I bought this thing out of a pickle factory in Michigan. I'm way down here in South Georgia. Got a little sting on them. Anything that's not perfect about them, kick them out. I just throw them on the floor. We blow the whole shop out when we're done. Kick out anything that's stung, doesn't look just right. I'll, I'll put in a clip from when we're running, when we have production running through here. I have a team of 
young girl down either side of this belt. This belt's running peas off the end into big hoppers where we then measure the peas out into eight pound sacks on a table over there and then we put them in the walk-in cooler. Okay, well that's how you shell and clean peas. Me and Mercer done got a little warm in there. It's hot, it's hot in South Georgia, y'all. So me and Mercer, we're gonna go catch us some air conditioning and cool down a little bit and get ready to eat some good old South Georgia peas tonight for supper. I thank all y'all for watching. We'll see you next time.